So to hook up your snowblower, it's gonna be very similar on most models. Put your belt on. So we've already got it over the fan. You come from behind the axle, straight up. Make sure your PTO is actually engaged. Obviously the tractor off, but when you engage the PTO, it pulls the lever back and you can get the belt between the axle and the PTO lever down there. And just walk it over the fan, obviously, as we did here. Make sure both sides are walked over the fan, like that. Again, just behind the axle, kind of rest it down like that. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is get these back tabs into these lower ears first. These are gonna go probably a little hard because the tractor's got brand new ears and paint on it. Yours will probably fall in a little easier. But you put the, the, the tabs into the ears first before you worry about the pins up top. It's a lot easier if you got two people, but you can do it with one. And you can either pull the blower back or the tractor forward. Once you get on those ears, rotate this bracket up. Take your spring pins out of lock position. Just kind of wiggle it. There they go. Okay. Now that you got that on, make sure your spring is here. You can either connect the spring before or after. And then pay attention to your model for the belt routing. Depending on your model, it's gonna route a little different. Now that you got your lower mounted, just pull your belt up. And then make sure it goes down in here. So you're behind the axle and into the mule drive. And then it's gonna make its 90. But you have to make sure you're in here. You have to go back and forth if you don't have two people between putting it in the pulleys and the pulley up top and the pulleys down below. And then pull this here, make sure it doesn't get twisted. And then this V pulley is going to take the V of the belt underneath. And then that's going to go to the bottom of the jack shaft pulley on this model. And then this flat part. It's going to go on the flat pulley underneath. If you need to give yourself tension, you can pull on the arm with the spring. And then what I usually do is I'll pull on that arm a little bit, make sure everything's in there. And even though the pulley with the V is going to the bottom of this, I usually walk it in on like this. Over, over the big pulley, it's mounted the same right way. And then be careful of your fingers. And if you need to take tension off that, you can. Hopefully you can see this. And just walk it right on like that. All right, and then double check to make sure it's in the pulley in the engine. Often they'll come out, not a big deal. Yeah, this one slid forward, so not the end of the world. Usually you can just, again, take tension off this here, and then walk it back on the pulley over here. And again, if you got two people, it makes life easier. And just walk it on there, and then release the, the arm with the spring on it. And then make sure you're good up front. There's no extra twists in it. It just it makes one twist. Or a turn, I should say. Now you want to pull it. So here's your diagram on the 200 400 series. It comes off this pulley. It goes underneath. Back around the flat. On the 4000s and the 3000s, it's a little different. But you hook it up the same way. Just the belt routing is kind of reversed. Make sure you got tension on here. Your belt feels good. And connect. And you take your your two open ends into each other there we go. and twist them. so kind of get the two open ends pulling at each other and then give it a little twist I don't know if you can see that but you kind of twist it in and then back around and now you can thread this left arm on
make sure you got both washers and two pins. The back one can be a permanent pin, that's fine. Send this through here. We sell these washers on our website if you need them. I'll walk this back in. So normally, if you have your lift all the way down, it's the easiest to hook it up. Sometimes it might be down too far, depending on your ground. But we didn't hook this pin up yet because sometimes you need a little play here. So it's a little too far forward, I'm just going to start the tractor up. Alright, hook these up with the pin away from your foot. Don't ask me how I know. Now you're going to have this. Make sure just give it a little shove, nine times out of ten. Hook this up. And a couple quick things. We recommend putting some kind of lube on here and on this worm gear. The drive belts are case finger saw OEM. Important to be. They're 9 16 wide and made of a real good material. They last. The belts you're going to get at your local stores are going to be half inch or 5 8 And they won't fit in the pulleys correctly. They'll change the RPM and they don't last. They'll get you out of a bind, but you won't find 916 belts anywhere besides casing or saw and maybe special order. So we stock those on our website. We recommend those. Here. They're a little bit more money, but the last three or four times in the long run, they're way cheaper. These washers, important to have the big washers there. If you don't have them, we've got them in stock. This needs lube, it's been sitting for a while, but that's how it functions. It's simple once it's moved up, it feels real nice. People complain about the height on these lifting. These will lift actually pretty darn far if everything's in good shape. There's bushings in, in here. If those bushings are shot, it really affects the lifting. If your pins are worn, if your holes are worn, if your ears are worn, if the holes in the mule drive are worn, or the ears down here, all that will affect the height lift drastically. If your hole on your arm is worn, that'll affect it. If this bracket is loose on your tractor, it is, it'll affect the lift height. If the hole is in your piston where it mounts to this rock shaft are worn. So all it takes is one of those things to be really worn, or all of them a little bit worn, and your blower won't lift nearly as high as it should. So this one you can see the blower's got a little bit of play in it, but the arm's got a little play in it. And when you're snow blowing, it's the tractor's sitting at a heck of an angle, but you really don't need any more than six or eight inches off the off the ground. So that should clear your curbs, anything else you need to clear. Make sure your tires got full air in them. That'll make a huge difference too, because you're putting weight on here, so your tires are gonna squat anyways. And if they're not aired up like they should be, you're already sitting lower. So, if yours isn't lifting, check the bushings first and the wear pins in your mule drive. And also, the holes in here make a big difference too, as far as it'll lift. So you'll see this one's a little bit worn. There's a gap in the back. So that's gonna make a difference. That little bit of gap right there just makes a big enough difference. You'll see, I just picked up probably an inch or two right there. So, you can put bushings in here. You can put a bigger piece of pipe on there. But if you really need more height, literally I'll lift it up and you'll see the, 